everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new welcome and if not then welcome back my name is Jackie Thompson and in today's video I'm going to be talking about women who have made significant contributions to the science community women such as Alice Ball Rosalind Franklin Nettie Maria Stevens and Lise Meitner and also I have a special guest with me which is this little this little puppy right here he's just gonna be chilling <laughs> He's just gonna be chilling in the background uh, during my video. So let's get to it. So the first woman I'm going to be talking about is Alice Ball. She was born in 1892 in Seattle, Washington. She studied chemistry at the University of Hawaii and she was also the first African American to get her master's degree and professorship at the university's chemistry department. She did research on treatments for leprosy. At the time, the best available treatment was chamugra oil, but at the time, it wasn't really easy because of its chemical makeup to work with, and it wasn't as effective the way that they were using it. So Alice Ball discovered the first successful treatment for leprosy using chamugra oil, making it an injectable form to have more effect on the patients. She did this by isolating the oil into fatty acid components of different molecular weights, allowing her to manipulate the oil into a water-soluble injectable form. But unfortunately, she died in 1916 at the age of 24. She died after the complications of inhaling chloride gas in a lab teaching accident. Unfortunately, she didn't get to see the full outcome of her discovery and the impact that it had on the community because at the time leprosy, a lot of people were dying from leprosy and no one could really do anything because the way that they were using the chamugra oil was ineffective. But she made it effective by making it soluble and injectable. Dr. Arthur Dean continued her research and called it the Dean Method and he did not give her credit for her discovery. Years later is when she finally got recognition for her discovery and it is now called the Ball Method. Now on to the second woman we're going to talk about today which is Rosalind Franklin. Rosalind Franklin was born on July 25th in 1920 in London. She studied physics and chemistry at Newman's Women's College at Cambridge University. In 1946 she moved to Paris and perfected her skills in x-ray crystallography. She eventually moved back to London and worked with Maurice Wilkins at King's College. Together, Franklin and Wilkins worked together to discover the structure of DNA. But unfortunately, they had a falling out and they didn't really get along. So even though they were working together, they were pretty separate and didn't really talk to one another. Wilkins ended up showing Rosalind Franklin's unpublished data and photographs that she took herself of the structure to James Watson and Francis Crick, who then used her photographs to come up with their DNA model that became famous and was basically the correct model of the DNA double human. Helix. Rosalind Franklin's photograph, famously known as Photograph 51, was the photo that Watson and Crick used to finalize their idea of what the DNA model looked like. So without her photograph, they would not have been able to come up with that structure. Rosalind Franklin died at the age of 37 due to ovarian cancer. It wasn't until after she died that Crick gave Franklin credit in the help of discovering the double helix. Before Rosalind Franklin passed away, she also did amazing work on a few other things such as the structure of viruses and many other things that I will link in the description below. Now on to the third woman, which is Nettie Maria Stevens. She was born July 7th in 1861. She became a teacher at first and continued to work her way through college while teaching. At the age of 39 is when she began working as a research scientist. She was interested in sex determination. She concluded that sex is inherited as a chromosomal factor and that males determine the gender of the offspring. And this is known as the chromosomal theory of inheritance. But at the time, this wasn't widely accepted in the science community because other scientists still believed that there were other factors in determining the sex of the offspring. She died on May 4th in 1912 at the age of 53. Eventually, her ideas were accepted in the scientific community and she was recognized for her findings on sex determination. Now, on to the last woman I'm going to talk about today, number four, which is Lise Meitner. Lise Meitner was born on November 7th in 1878 in Austria. She received her doctorate degree in physics at the University of Vienna. She studied nuclear physics and radioactivity. She was the first to isolate isotope protactinium-231, which she did name. She also studied nuclear isomerism, beta decay, and researched the products of neutron bombardment of uranium. And for the physical characteristics of this, 
proposed the term fission. She proposed this term in 1939, but one of the scientists she worked with got the Nobel Prize for Chemistry for discovering nuclear fission in 1944. Many people believe that she should have gotten credit for that discovery and that it should have been a shared prize between the two scientists. Lise Meitner also had the opportunity to work for the Manhattan Project in 1942 for the United States, but refused to help create the atomic bomb, so she turned them down. She retired in 1960 and eight years later passed away. But later after she passed away, the chemical element Minerium was named in her honor. That is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, comment down below and let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified every time I upload. I will see you all next week. Bye!